Uh, good afternoon and welcome to another session of the WNS Operative Grand Rounds. And today we have Dr. Tyler Koski from Northwestern University discussing spinal deformity. Good afternoon, Tyler. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Uh, this is a fairly interesting topic, uh, something that neurosurgeons, a lot of us aren't as comfortable with. Obviously, this has traditionally been more orthopedic related, but uh, that's changing with time. Do you agree? I certainly do. We're seeing more and more of that in neurosurgeons, and more neurosurgeons are looking to educate themselves on the topic. Uh, here listed are the disclosures for both of the surgeons involved today. Uh, first is Dr. Koski's uh, disclosures, and then followed by mine. So we're going to jump straight into it. Uh, rather than waste time with any real introduction, we have a lot of material to cover, and I thought most surgeons would really rather get right to it. Uh, talk to us a little bit about deformity, recognizing deformity, and patient symptoms in relation to this. Well, anytime we see a patient in a, a spinal clinic, we see patients with back pain or leg pain or other issues. Deformity can factor in in a lot of those, those uh, problems, and you really have to be looking for it to recognize it oftentimes. You can say a patient with, with back pain in an MRI that shows degenerative disease but really assessing the global picture of the patient is really what deformity is all about. So looking for things like scoliosis and kyphosis and trying to factor in how those patient symptoms can relate to, to that overall alignment problem. And that really helps to build a treatment plan that works best for those patients. I'm gonna ask you early on because this is a question frequently on my mind and I don't wanna forget about it as we get further. When a patient comes in complaining of back pain, how do you know the pain is more related to a sagittal imbalance or a deformity versus the set arthropathy, degenerative disc disease, or any of the other multitudes of things that can cause back pain? Well, there's no real simple answer to that, unfortunately. We all know that back pain is, is very common and a difficult thing to diagnose and treat oftentimes. Certain you know, symptoms such as back pain that's really a fatiguing type back pain, a low back pain across the uh, lumbosacral region that gets worse throughout the course of the day, oftentimes tends to be characteristic for a sagittal imbalance. And that's about, about the easiest one to pick up. You know, it's very difficult when a patient has a degenerative scoliosis and back pain, thinking is it the facets or the discs or the alignment? And that really is something that you have to talk to your patients about. It comes down to a lot of counseling, and a lot of careful evaluation on the part of the surgeon. The best part about spinal deformity is when you're coming up with solutions for these, if you really think you need to correct the deformity and you end up doing a long segment construct, you take care of facet pain, disc pain, and alignment pain all in one. So you actually have patients that are pretty happy in the end that they've unfortunately just lost a lot of motion segments to get there. So do you think it's a possibility that when you correct somebody's imbalance and you treat all those other problems, part of their pain may be coming from these other pain generators, but it's really hard to know? It's very hard to know. I think it's always a multifactorial system, and you try and identify what's the biggest drivers of their pain and make sure you include those in your treatment plan. So let's talk a little bit about the different types of deformities and what you're looking at when you look at a deformity patient. So when I'm looking at a deformity patient, and what you see listed on the slide, there are really the two big types of deformity, which is scoliosis and kyphosis. In most adult patients, we end up seeing a kyphoscoliosis, combining the two as being a very common occurrence, particularly in the degenerative uh, spinal deformity patients. You oftentimes will see some adolescent idiopathics that have progressed in adulthood, where we call it an adult idiopathic curvature, that oftentimes can be relatively well-balanced but most of the time when we're dealing with these adult degenerative patients seeking treatment, they end up with a combination of those. And looking for those is really key. And the way to do that is both clinically and with radiographs. And you see here a 36 inch x-ray that unfortunately I don't have flipped the appropriate way. We usually like to look at it left side on the left when my PowerPoint flipped it back when I was reformatting some pictures. But looking at that from an AP and a lateral view is really key. Trying to assess the overall balance both coronally and sagittally and when you see I've listed there, the, sag the SVA stands for sagittal vertical axis. And that's usually C7 plumb line, which we'll talk about a little later. Okay. So let's talk about initial uh, evaluation, which you sort 